Hello y'all this is maybe I'm rambling now we are going to talk about two stories so let's get it. Time to party. Teen who filmed George Floyd's murder given journalism award a teenager who filmed the murder of George Floyd by a white police officer has been given a special journalism award by the Pulitzer Prize Board. Dernella Frazier, now 18, was awarded the citation for her courage. The Pulitzer Committee said her film spurred protests for racial justice around the world and was used as evidence in the trial that convicted police officer Derek Chauvin. The Pulitzers are the most prestigious journalism awards in the U.S. The committee said they honored Ms. Frazier for courageously recording the murder of George Floyd, a video that spurred protests against police brutality around the world, highlighting the crucial role of citizens in journalists' quest for truth and justice. Ms. Frazier came across the arrest of Floyd while walking with her cousin in Minneapolis on 25 May last year. She told a court earlier this year that she started recording the incident on her phone because, I saw a man terrified, begging for his life. Ms. Frazier described hearing Floyd, saying I can't breathe. He was terrified. He was calling for his mom, the murder that drove America to the brink. Should we stop sharing videos of black trauma? The video was replayed around the world and sparked mass protests and a racial reckoning in the U.S. To many, Floyd's death while in police custody became a symbol of police brutality, particularly against people of color, and it sparked worldwide demonstrations for racial justice. The footage was used as evidence at Chauvin's murder trial earlier this year. He was later found guilty on three charges. Second-degree murder, third-degree murder and manslaughter. At the murder trial, she told the court that witnessing Floyd's death had changed her life. When I look at George Floyd I look at my dad. I look at my brother. My cousins. My uncles, because they are all black, she said. Audibly crying. And I look at how that could have been one of them. And that was the teens part of the story and. No we will talk about the second part Israel X top spy reveals Mossad operations against Iran the. Outgoing head of the Israeli spy agency Mossad has given a revelatory interview about the country's. Operations against Iran. Yossi Cohen gave details about the theft of Iran's nuclear archive. The warehouse raid in 2018 ferried tens of thousands of documents out of the country to Israel. He also hinted at Israeli involvement in the destruction of Iran's nuclear facility at Natanz and the assassination of a nuclear scientist. Mr. Cohen retired as the head of Mossad last week. He spoke to journalist Elon Dion on Channel 12's Yuvda documentary program which was broadcast on Israeli television on Thursday night. Iran and Israel's shadow war takes a dangerous turn. Iran nuclear crisis in 300 words. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu appointed Mr. Cohen as Mossad chief in late 2015. He joined the agency in 1982 after studying at university in London and told the program he had had hundreds of passports throughout his career. The most revelatory moments in the interview were about the theft of Iran's nuclear archive. Mr. Netanyahu revealed the stolen files at a press conference in 2018, which he said proved Iran once covertly tried to make nuclear weapons and had secretly retained the know-how, an allegation Iran denied. Mr. Cohen said in the interview that it took two years to plan the operation. In total 20 Mossad agents were involved on the ground, none of whom were Israeli citizens. The journalist Elon Dion said, The spy chief watched the operation from a command center in Tel Aviv. Agents broke into a warehouse and had to crack more than 30 safes. He said, As images of the trove appeared on screen, there was incredible excitement for us all, he said, as quoted by the Times of Israel.
All operatives survived the raid and are well. He added. Although some had to be extracted from Iran. An interview remarkable in its detail. By Rafi Berg. BBC News Online Middle East Editor. While it is not unusual for ex-Mossad heads to give interviews or make their views on certain issues known to the press, Yossi Cohen's comments are remarkable for the level of detail they divulge. Indeed the Times of Israel Online calls the interview, stunning and revelatory, like something from the pages of a thriller. Cohen describes how agents cracked safes before lifting tons of Iranian nuclear documents and getting them out the country while being chased elsewhere. He comes closer than ever to admitting Israel sabotaged an underground Iranian nuclear site. The interview, however, is calculated and it would have been cleared by Israel's military censors. Its timing is interesting too. Coming as talks to revive the Iranian nuclear deal are about to resume amid hints of progress. It also serves as a reminder to Israel's foes that the Mossad is willing to act deep behind what it considers to be enemy lines. Israel has spoken openly about taking those tens of thousands of documents. But Mr. Cohen also hinted at Mossad involvement in other operations long rumored to have been the work of Israeli agents. Early in the interview Mr. Cohen spoke about the Iranian nuclear facility at Natanz. Iran said that sabotage caused a fire at the uranium enrichment site in July 2020. A day after revealing new equipment in April this year. Officials again said it had been sabotaged and had suffered major damage. Iran accused Israel of nuclear terrorism over the incident. Mr. Cohen told Ms. Dion that he knew the site well, and that he could take her to the cellar, where the spinning centrifuges are located. He then added, those that used to spin. Nowadays, the cellar doesn't look like it used to. And he also spoke about Mohsen Fakhrizadeh. Iran's top nuclear scientist was assassinated on a road outside Tehran last November, an attack. Iran publicly blamed on Israel. Machine gun with AI, used to kill Iran scientist. Why was a top Iranian scientist assassinated? The ex-Mossad chief did not confirm or deny involvement in the death. But he said the scientist was a target, for many years. Adding that his scientific knowledge concerned the agency. If the man constitutes a capability that endangers the citizens of Israel. He must stop existing, he was quoted as saying, but added that someone could be spared, if he is prepared to change profession and not harm us any longer. So that's it for this article don't forget to like share and subscribe peace out.